So our co-chairs alternate their lectures. Uh, so today it's uh, Alexei Bolsinov's turn. This lecture will be devoted to, to one particular topic, uh, the linearization of uh, nine phase operators and uh, left symmetric um, uh, algebras. So this is a plan of the lecture. Now first I, I will I'll try to uh, to, to, to explain that uh, the sort of linear objects uh, in uh, geometry are, of course, very important. And uh, so then uh, uh, I will explain that uh, the linear, in a certain sense, uh, nine case separators. So these are uh, the same uh, as uh, the object which, we, which is somehow well known in algebra, so called uh, left symmetric algebra. Uh, but then uh, so we'll talk a little bit about classification of uh, uh, algebra and then that I will explain the, so how these linear uh, objects are uh, to naturally appear in uh, in uh, this area. Well, and of course, so this is just uh, this appearance is indeed very important. You take a nonlinear object, you linearize it, and uh, you get. Uh, something to, to linear and of course uh, as soon as uh, this uh, the concept uh, is understood uh, the next question uh, will be about uh, uh, possibility of such a linearization no, the more precisely that's a linearization problem uh, in uh, in the following sense you take a nonlinear object you you look at uh, its linearization and uh, you want to understand whether or not uh, the original nonlinear object uh, so can be reduced to linear one by uh, by uh, coordinate transformation. Uh, so then, uh, yeah, the, 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 uh, the, 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 I will discuss one very particular and uh, I believe important example when this linearization procedure works very well, uh, and uh, some some general result in, uh, in this. Uh, uh, in uh, this problem, uh, and finally, uh, the, just one remark uh, about uh, difference between the, the real analytic and the smooth situation in this context. Good. Uh, first, uh, to linear objects in in mathematics or in geometry, what uh, do I actually mean by that? So I uh, I mean something very very uh, simple. Uh, uh, and even naive, uh, so the linear function, for instance. So this is a function of the form a one x one plus and so on to a n x n. And of course, uh, this uh, depends on the choice of coordinates. So, so you can change coordinates in such a way that uh, this function so will not be linear anymore. Or uh, so linear map, uh, uh, of course, we know all to, to what is that. Uh, the linear vector fields, uh, you the, the, this is absolutely standard. So linear vector fields, uh, the, that's a very nice. And if we consider the ODs related to them, like x dot equals, say, x, that's the uh, simplest possible <clears throat> system of ODs, which can be solved by, by uh, the purely algebraically methods. Uh, and uh, you, uh, you also remember that so it's if you have a, a singular point uh, of, uh, of a certain OD where the vector field uh, equals zero, what we uh, usually uh, do to understand the behavior of, of the, the dynamics of this system nearby this point, so we uh, we linearize it and look at uh, the linearization multipliers and this sort of thing. Uh, the linear Poisson structure is also something very interesting. Uh, to, you take uh, uh, Poisson uh, structure such that uh, the, the the components of, of the Poisson tensor are linear functions in the local coordinates. Uh, let's discuss uh, about uh, this. Uh, let's talk about this 
particular example a little bit in more detail. So not just, uh, I, I want to remind something very well known and then the, you, it, it will be much clearer uh, the, uh, the discussion on the uh, tensor. So of course, uh, so this list can be uh, continued uh, can, and uh, in my, uh, uh, lecture number four, I, I think. So the, a pre-recorded lecture, I mean. So that I, I, I'll be talking about uh, linear Riemannian matrix. So whose uh, components are the linear in coordinates and we'll see that it's also something very interesting. Okay, so now um, uh, Poisson structures, uh, uh, this, uh, this proposition, uh, uh, actually due to Sophos Lee, this uh, is well known. So it's if you consider the linear Poisson structure, linear, I repeat, in the sense that the components of uh, the corresponding tensor are linear functions in local coordinates. So then uh, it corresponds to just uh, to uh, a certain finite dimensional Lie algebra. So in the sense that uh, the uh, coefficients of these linear combinations, so C, I, J, K, so they form a tensor and this is nothing else but the uh, structure tensor uh, for uh, Lie algebra. In other words, so these components so satisfy Jacobi identity. And uh, this basically means uh, that the linear Poisson structure, so the, the, the set of linear Poisson structures, so this is just the same as the set of uh, finite dimensional the algebra. So these two objects are uh, isomorphic. So the, 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 the question, so, I would say so it becomes uh, purely algebraic. You, you, can, you will be able to reformulate uh, all the questions you can ask about uh, uh, such uh, uh, linear Poisson objects in purely algebraic terms. So I, I will reformulate uh, this in a slightly different way here. Uh, uh, so the, this uh, the relationship uh, in kind of in the opposite direction uh, the, that the, the, this definition is uh, is absolutely standard uh, in Poisson geometry. If I consider finite dimensional the algebra G, then uh, it's the dual space uh, that carries uh, the natural structure. Uh, of a Poisson manifold. Uh, this is so-called Lee Poisson structure, and it is defined in the following way. So if I have two uh, functions f and g defined on g star, uh, then the, 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 D, uh, the Poisson bracket of uh, these two functions is defined in the following way. So here is a formula. You compute uh, the differentials of these functions. So since functions are defined on g star, the differentials belong to G star star. So G star star, so this is the same as G, uh, this Miley algebra, and uh, I compute uh, the, the bracket, the commutator of this differential. I will get again uh, an element of Miley algebra. And then the, so I uh, take uh, the pairing of this element with uh, the point X. Uh, the, at which I compute uh, this uh, the, this bracket, or in coordinates, uh, the, this uh, the formula so looks like like this, and you see that uh, uh, the uh, the components of uh, of the the Poisson the, uh, tensor in this case are linear in coordinates and coefficients are exactly structure constants of uh, the Miley algebra. So, I, uh, so there is some difference between my formulas here and there. So the, the, the upper and lower indices are interchanged and no, but uh, for a very simple reason, because uh, the, uh, the, uh, the bracket is defined on the, on the dual uh, space and uh, and for this reason upper and lower indices uh, so so should be should should be interchanged so they, this is something very standard so linear uh, Poisson structure so they correspond to uh, uh, to the Lie algebra so now the, let us uh, the, ask uh, uh, let's do the same trick or ask the same question for uh, uh, nine Huss operator. So we take a nine Huss operator, 
uh, L, uh, oh, uh, not L, but R, sorry, uh, R, uh, uh, whose uh, components uh, in, uh, in coordinates X1, Xn uh, are the linear in, uh, in X. So to, like this. So to the, uh, I, so you see, I use uh, the, the this word linear in quotation marks just to explain that this is an inverse operator. Of course, it is a linear operator as uh, 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 as a function, but uh, the way it mean uh, linearity in a different context. Uh, it's linearity as uh, it is linear as uh, as, a, as a linear operator depending on coordinates. Of course, in this uh, case, uh, our manifold. Uh, that must be just the, the vector space, uh, x1, xn, so these are Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so now the, the question, so the, uh, can we say anything special to, uh, about uh, this type of ninth Hewitt operator? So these uh, coefficients, a, uh, i, j, k, uh, do they correspond uh, to any algebraic object? And uh, so the answer is uh, the yes. Uh, the, the, and the answer is as follows. Uh, that, that I refer to the preprint uh, by uh, the, the, the Winterhalder. Uh, the, 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 I, I don't know, so the, may, maybe there is a better uh, the reference to uh, this result, but uh, the result is as follows. So these uh, numbers, so these coefficients, so they indeed, uh, they, uh, if we consider them as structure constants of a certain algebra, we can consider any tensor uh, with uh, of this type with two lower and one upper index. We can consider such a tensor as uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, as a structure tensor of uh, just a certain algebra. In any case, uh, the, the the problem will be that uh, this algebra will be a sort of stupid, not commutative, not associative, not, not, no, nothing special. But in this case, it is very special. This is so-called uh, the left symmetric uh, the algebra. Uh, the, and uh, in other words, uh, the, this uh, the observation say, says that, that uh, uh, there is a very natural bijection between the finite dimensional left symmetric algebras and then uh, Hewitt operators with uh, the linear uh, entries. So next, of course, I need to explain uh, what uh, uh, what uh, this uh, algebra is, the linear symmetric algebra. So what is the definition? Uh, the, the, the definition is uh, as follows. So the, the, just some preliminary discussion first. Uh, let us consider just an arbitrary algebra over R or C that, that doesn't really matter. So then, to, so what we can do, we, we can uh, construct an object which is well known in algebra in, uh, called an associator. So associator of three uh, elements of algebra, xi, uh, eta, and zeta. So it's, uh, this is just this expression here. Uh, you you consider you consider triple product, uh, and uh, the, uh, then the, the, the put brackets in uh, in a different way. So there are two possibilities in this case, and subtract. No, the, it, it's uh, the, the simply it's uh, to to just to say that. Uh, uh, the algebra is associative if and only if uh, associator is identically zero. So that is uh, associativity condition. In uh, in the case of left symmetric algebras, uh, uh, the the, uh, the we we are going to slightly to relax. So this condition associativity in this way. So we the, the, the will assume that uh, the associator is not zero, but uh, if we interchange uh, two uh, left uh, vectors here in this expression, xi and eta, 
uh, then the associator will remain the same. So this is, it, it looks as if you see uh, this uh, condition for the first time, you you may ask him so why, why it is, uh, why, why this condition to make sense, but it, it does make sense no, for, no, for instance, already for this reason. So these, uh, the algebraic objects correspond to the, the, the very important geometric object, and here is um, uh, operators. And also, uh, the, uh, uh, this uh, definition immediately implies uh, that uh, associative algebras, uh, all of them are uh, left symmetric. So this is just the generalization of uh, um, associativity. Uh, so that's uh, that's a definition. So the, then, to, to let, let's have a look at uh, um, as a, at some examples. Uh, uh, the first example is infinite dimensional, uh, and the second example also will be, be infinite dimensional. The finite dimensional examples. Uh, uh, there are a lot of them. So just take any associative algebra, and uh, the, it's uh, the will fit for. Uh, our purposes. Okay, so in, infinite dimensional example. Uh, take uh, not just the space of all smooth functions on the real line and consider so this operation, which looks very strange, product of uh, function f and the uh, derivative of g. So f uh, times g uh, uh, dg by dx. Um, uh, and a strange expression, uh, not commutative in any sense, and uh, yeah, it's not associative, but uh, uh, if we uh, compute uh, the associator in this case, uh, so we will get uh, this expression here. And uh, uh, of course, if we interchange F and G, so nothing changes. Uh, so this uh, algebra is, uh, is left symmetric. Okay, associative, but uh, uh, not associative, sorry, but uh, left symmetric. Uh, so it's one more example, uh, quite uh, the geometric. Uh, take uh, the manifold with the flat symmetric connection, uh, NABLA, and consider the space of all uh, vector fields. Then uh, for two vector fields, uh, the sign D uh, defines so this operation here. So just a uh, uh, covariant derivative of uh, it uh, uh, with respect to Xi. Uh, this is uh, the, this formula also defines left symmetric algebra. Uh, so the Y, uh, okay, so we compute uh, associator in this case. Uh, it obviously takes uh, this the form here. And if we uh, the, the interchange xi and theta and subtract one from the other, then we will get uh, a very well-known expression. So here, uh, so this is exactly uh, the, uh, the, the curvature. Curvature uh, tends to reply to three uh, vector fields psi, eta, and uh, zeta, uh, which is zero since our uh, connection is flat. So flatness uh, is equivalent in this case to the left uh, symmetry condition. So th this is just to say that uh, uh, the, the in, uh, in some objects uh, that very familiar to us, uh, this left symmetry condition uh, appears, but uh, it, uh, it is just could be written in a, a little bit unusual way. Let's say it in this, in this way. Uh, so what, uh, what is important uh, to uh, maybe to, to understand in, in this business and what is a property which uh, explains that uh, these algebras are uh, indeed very natural. That, that this property here. Uh, so let's do the following. So take um, a left symmetric algebra A arbitrary and consider uh, can consider commutator of two vectors xi and theta, bracket of xi and theta defined by uh, very simple and traditional formulas, xi eta minus eta xi. Uh, the statement is as follows. So if uh, our 
uh, algebra is left symmetric, so then uh, uh, this commutator satisfies Jacobi identity, and, and therefore uh, uh, this algebra carries the structure of a Lie algebra. Uh, we obviously know that uh, this property holds true for associative algebras, but uh, the, the, I, I didn't know this uh, until Andrei Kanyaev explained this uh, fact to me, but associativity is uh, not uh, necessary. And uh, then basically uh, uh, the, this left symmetry condition is, uh, uh, is uh, the, the the most uh, kind of natural generalization of associativity. Uh, so that, uh, that guarantees uh, the, the fulfillment of this property. So commutator is, uh, satisfies uh, the Jacobi uh, identity. Uh, for this reason, uh, uh, these algebras are also known as uh, pre lie algebras. Uh, so there are some, some, some other uh, names uh, the Inver Kosul, uh, uh, so some people call them uh, like this. Uh, so the, uh, I, I can't say that uh, they are uh, very well studied. Uh, no, no, but uh, the, there are algebraic papers denote, uh, they devoted uh, to uh, this uh, object. Uh, uh, okay, uh, the, to maybe a couple additional remarks. Uh, to let, let us consider the, the, the operators of uh, uh, left and uh, the right uh, the multiplications in uh, this uh, uh, in this algebra. Uh, these uh, so these operators or. or so how to say so this uh, so what 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 it does I, I take psi and uh, to each element psi I, I assign certain linear operator acting on algebra so it looks like a representation but it's not representation because uh, uh, the, the, the our algebra is not associative uh, so so there is no way to represent it uh, uh, by, by means of an associative algebra. Uh, no, but uh, the, so the, this left uh, uh, operator, so L psi, uh, it gives a representation of the Lie algebra I just discussed. So if the Lie algebra associated with given the left symmetric algebra. It, well, this is uh, that's, it's very easy to, to check because uh, this left uh, the symmetry condition that can be written in terms of uh, uh, this uh, left multiplication operator in uh, this way here. And uh, uh, the, this means exactly uh, that uh, uh, the Jacobi identity holds true for uh, operators uh, L uh, xi and uh, L eta. Which is nice. Uh, if we the, the want to do uh, the same trick for uh, so right uh, multiplication, then uh, we, we will not see anything uh, so interesting. You will get uh, some identity of this kind, uh, which uh, I don't know, which is hard to interpret in uh, any reasonable way. Uh, okay, uh, I, uh, I uh, have not uh, explained so why uh, so we have such a nice uh, uh, the relationship between uh, uh, Left symmetric algebras and the nine Hoyts operators. Let's do it. Of course, it, it is not uh, so so difficult. So so once again, uh, the, 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 let's discuss uh, this uh, relationship. Uh, take uh, now. Uh, I have uh, instead of considering nine Hoyts operators, I will take um, uh, left symmetric algebra and construct uh, nine Hoyts operator in. Uh, 
kind of more or less invariant way. Uh, the, take uh, the finite dimension of uh, the left symmetric algebra. So then uh, the, as a manifold on which I will define my nine hertz operator, I will take uh, uh, just uh, the, this uh, the algebra itself consider it as uh, a fine uh, vector space. Uh, then so that I will uh, do so the following. So I will construct a tensor field of type one one uh, in the following way. Um, uh, I uh, take uh, point uh, eta, and uh, in uh, at uh, this point eta, I, I want to define an operator which depends on this point. And by definition, so this operator so it will be just the right multiplication, right multiplication by uh, eta. So uh, R eta here, uh, this is an operator which depends on point eta and. Uh, as a result, I will get the field of uh, of operators of one one tensors on uh, our manifold, and that's exactly what is in our terminology what uh, what is called uh, operator. So we interpret uh, this correspondence R now not as a, a map from the Lie algebra uh, to a set of linear operators on it, but uh, as uh, an operator vector field. So, uh, so basically R eta, uh, uh, this is exactly the nine uh, uh, operator. So we we are talking about in in local coordinates. Uh, this operator uh, so looks like this. Uh, uh, it is defined by means of uh, structure constants and this linear in uh, X in uh, the Cartesian coordinates and uh, the statement. Uh, uh, or the observation by Ted Winterhalder uh, is uh, that uh, this uh, operator R, R eta, uh, is uh, is uh, nine hertz. So see, if and only if uh, this uh, algebra is uh, is uh, the left symmetric. Uh, the I, I just I, I, I want to point out that uh, so this uh, definition here. Uh, makes invariant sense and the invariant sense is, is very easy. If you have a left uh, symmetric algebra that uh, an inverse operator is right multiplication, so, so to say. Uh, the, the proof is uh, obviously very simple. So what you need to do, you, you just need to compute for this operator, you need to compute uh, the, an inverse distortion. Uh, and uh, no, since uh, uh, the components of this operator are linear in, uh, in coordinates, if, if you do this computation, then uh, uh, the, you will get an expression that's still linear in X. Uh, uh, and uh, it makes sense to just to compute the partial derivative of the expression, not uh, the uh, nine distortion itself, but uh, its partial derivative. That partial derivative, uh, uh, they the, the will be, they will look very uh, simple. So this is a quadratic uh, expression in terms of uh, structure constants of uh, uh, the, the, our uh, algebra, which is exactly the uh, difference between two associators. So it is zero uh, if and only if uh, uh, this uh, algebra is uh, left uh, symmetric uh, and uh, uh, this uh, this shows that the left symmetric condition uh, is equivalent to the fact that uh, so it has a uh, uh, constant uh, entries uh, no but it's in addition so we know that uh, uh, the, uh, our operator R, so since it is linear, it, uh, it is uh, zero at the origin, so uh, uh, therefore it is zero everywhere. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and we have this result. No, that, 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 uh, that, that is uh, the easier. So it's just the reformulation if you, if you wish. Um, okay, so what about uh, the classification of left symmetric algebras? Uh, the, the, as far as uh, uh, 
we know this is um, kind of totally open problem. Uh, uh, the, even in dimension three, we uh, do not uh, know complete uh, answer. Uh, the, but in dimension uh, two, this uh, this can be done. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about this. And on the first. Uh, 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 the remark it's dimension one in dimension one uh, uh, so what what are the left symmetric algebras so not the one algebra uh, uh, so how we should uh, how, how we should sort of classify uh, the one dimensional algebra so in the standard way we choose the basis uh, uh, this basis consists of just one single vector uh, the the what what we need to analyze is uh, is just the product of this vector with itself so e squares will be equal to what uh, since it is one dimensional it, it's going to be just uh, uh, the, 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 the factor of uh, E with a certain coefficient A. Uh, there are two cases. Uh, if A is zero, then this is trivial algebra. So uh, for trivial in the sense that uh, the any product of two elements is zero. If A is uh, not zero, so then the, you, you can do very simple rescaling and reduce uh, this coefficient a to just uh, one. And this shows uh, that in dimension uh, it's one, there are only two, only two algebras. So the, uh, the, and the automatically these algebras will be the commutative, associative, uh, and the, the left symmetric. So it's no problem at all. So in dimension two, uh, so the idea is as follows. We, uh, no, we, we will proceed in the, in the following way, in the same way. Uh, so we will choose the basis and then the, uh, so it will uh, analyze uh, left symmetry condition for the structure constants in, in this case. But uh, the, what we should remember of is the fact that behind each uh, the left symmetric uh, algebra, so there is a very natural Lie algebra. Uh, and in this case, we will get uh, two-dimensional yields. So there are uh, two possibilities for two-dimensional yields. Uh, this algebra is, uh, is either commutative, that's one possibility, and the other possibility, uh, this, uh, this algebra is uh, solvable and that we can always find the basis satisfying so these conditions, uh, the commutator of E1 and E2 equals E1. Uh, and uh, so when we do our computations for uh, left symmetric algebras, we uh, we can always assume that uh, that one of these conditions is fulfilled. That either this algebra is commutative, uh, Lie algebra is commutative, and uh, this implies uh, that the left symmetric algebra is commutative. Uh, or, or it is uh, sort of slightly non-commutative, if I can say it in this way. No, the, that so the non-commutativity is uh, is controllable. Okay, and no, then of course, so this is uh, that it's uh, it's not uh, the, the easy task uh, because so there are uh, there are many cases to analyze. Uh, so, the, so you see. Uh, in uh, in the case of Lie algebra, so there are only two. Uh, the cases in this uh, situation, there will be twelve. Uh, or no, yeah, twelve. Yeah, two continuous families. Uh, there's a depending on parameters and uh, uh, ten uh, exceptional uh, exceptional so without parameters. Uh, the left symmetric uh, algebras and uh, this classification is due to uh, Bourdais. And uh, Andrei Konyaev, uh, Andrei, uh, the, 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 so the, he uh, algebraized, so they prefer to work with complex objects. Uh, uh, and uh, us, uh, so the differential geometers, uh, uh, somehow our, our manifolds are usually real. So uh, uh, Andrei so did uh, this classification in real case. Uh, 
So what is what is uh, what is the answer? Uh, no, the, the, the answer will be presented in two next two slides in table one and table two. You know, just to understand what you will see, uh, for each uh, uh, left symmetric algebra, you will see structure constants in uh, non-zero only non-zero. Um, uh, relations between E1 and E2. Uh, that, that I will uh, also uh, that I will show the right uh, uh, multiplication uh, operator, uh, the one uh, which uh, which is an anchors uh, operator, uh, and uh, not just for some reason. So left. Uh, uh, multiplication operator two just to compare them so they they must be the same in the commutative case so i will show only one of them and they are different in non-commutative case and you will see that they kind of they are essentially different it's uh, it, it's even uh, hard to recognize that they correspond to the same object so uh, here is uh, uh, here is uh, the uh, the, the result. So the, the first table corresponds to non-commutative case. Uh, so what, what I can say, but you see so some of uh, operators are so that's very nice and very simple. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is, uh, I, 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 I can't say much about them. So the, the before, Andrei Konyaev showed me so this table. I, I, I had the, 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 no idea about uh, so the, this algebraic object. But uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is the result. So you see, so there are two series here depending on parameters. And the commutative case uh, is, uh, is like this. So it, uh, no two comments. So, so if you look at uh, uh, the, uh, the last, uh, uh, Last example here. You you can immediately recognize uh, recognize uh, not just complex number uh, written in uh, in the form of uh, two by two matrix, uh, and uh, indeed it is uh, the case. So this is just uh, uh, the, the, the the algebra of complex numbers, and uh, the previous example. So this. Uh, this one it is written in a slightly maybe unusual way not, not just in, in for this classification that was natural but uh, this is just a diagonal a two-dimensional diagonal algebra you, you can change coordinates and reduce it to diagonal form just x and y on uh, on the diagonal exactly as it should be for uh, diagonalizable so Manchus operators. So, so we have this classification. Um, uh, so now uh, the, 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 I, I want to start uh, this discussion on the linearization procedure and linearization problem. And, but first, I, I want to ask the following question. So imagine that we have a Manchus operator to which is uh, diagonalizable at each point. To each point, uh, uh, so we can find uh, uh, the basis uh, such that um, the separator is uh, diagonal uh, with real eigenvalues, real diagonal elements. Okay, uh, so can we uh, do diagonalization not just uh, point-wise but in the neighborhood? No, the answer is no. Uh, no, if uh, eigenvalues collide. So then, so we cannot guarantee anything, and uh, uh, so so collision uh, to may uh, uh, to may lead to not some some unpredictable uh, situations. Let's say it, uh, not, not just an example to to, to illustrate. Uh, to, to consider uh, linear Nantes operator, so corresponding to, to one of. Uh, uh, the left symmetric algebras from uh, from the list that we just discussed. Uh, so then, uh, it is symmetric. This uh, is to, to meaning that at every point uh, you can uh, reduce it uh, to um, uh, uh, diagonal form uh, over R. Uh, but uh, so if you compute eigenvalues, uh, you will see that they are not smooth. So if uh, 
uh, civil, if uh, diagonalization in the neighborhood uh, is possible, then so diagonal elements uh, so will be um, just eigenvalues. And uh, since uh, our operator is uh, smooth, so the, the entries must be smooth, but they are not. And uh, so therefore, uh, the diagonalization is, um, is uh, impossible in, in this case. Uh, and also, uh, the, so this example uh, shows us, uh, so what, what is, what's the problem with uh, this iterator L? Well, the main problem is that so at the given point, uh, at point zero, zero, we consider this iterator becomes zero, so just zero. Uh, no, it, it, it's something similar to what uh, that we have uh, in the theory of ODEs when we consider singular point and then the linearization is vector field, for instance, uh, is zero at a certain point. We want to linearize it. Uh, uh, here the same. So if uh, a certain nine Hughes operator uh, vanishes at a certain point, it makes sense to consider uh, its linearization. And uh, this uh, uh, linearization is, is very uh, natural. But first, uh, one definition. So we will say that uh, the singular point is the singular point of scalar type. If uh, the, the following happens in this point, all eigenvalues collide. So, so, we, so we have an operator with just one single eigenvalue. Uh, and moreover, this operator uh, is just uh, the identity, proportional to identity. Uh, so that's that uh, if this happens that we say that uh, this, uh, this uh, singular point if is of scalar type and uh, that's exactly at uh, such a point that we are going to uh, consider this linearization procedure what we do no no first of all uh, the, the value of this eigenvalue uh, is not important we, we can always assume that uh, lambda is zero and just by subtracting subtracting from l to, to lambda identity lambda is constant uh, so uh, uh, if l is nine hues uh, l minus lambda identity is also nine hues and we may can see we may continue working with this object so uh, the, what i will do next i will uh, they expand uh, so this uh, operator in my coordinate system in the Taylor uh, series. Doesn't matter what this coordinate system is, that the first term is zero. So then next uh, L1 of X, uh, uh, this is uh, it's, it's a matrix whose entries are linear in X. Then the, the matrix uh, whose entries are quadratic and X, so, so and so on and so forth. Uh, so this just Taylor expansion of each uh, entry of my uh, the matrix in the standard sense. Uh, so now the, the point is uh, the following. So let us look at the first term in uh, this uh, expansion, the linear term, L uh, lin. Uh, so this is an object of... Uh, of, of this kind. So all uh, the entries are linear functions. So this is a linear linear operator uh, in, in this sense. Uh, and uh, the, the observation is that so this uh, linear part itself is an Einhuis operator. No, but it's very easy to see because uh, so if you uh, write down the condition that uh, the Einhuis distortion for L that vanishes, and uh, the, the substitute uh, this expansion. So then, so the, you, you sh this expansion after substitution will give identically again will give zero identically. Uh, and uh, and it, it, it's going to be series, uh, series which is identically zero. Each term of this series is zero. And if you look at the higher order, uh, there's a lower order term. But the linear term, you, you will see that this is exactly condition, and his condition for the linear part. So uh, this uh, linear part is an inclusive So which, uh, which is called, of course, a linearization of nonlinear L. Uh, and as we know, uh, this uh, the linearization that is nothing else but uh, the certain left symmetric culture. So this is left symmetric culture. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, the, so the, uh, the, the, this is another way so how to understand uh, the 
involvement of left symmetric algebra in the, this uh, the business. Uh, they um, uh, occur as linearization of uh, linearizations of non-linear and uh, inverse operators at singular points, the singular points of uh, scalar uh, type. That's, uh, uh, how much time do I have? Uh, about 10 minutes, I guess. 10 minutes, okay, good. So then the... Uh, oh, uh, so then, uh, uh, this is just on this slide, uh, uh, the, 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 I explain so how uh, this left symmetric algebra so can be defined in a little bit more invariant way without using structure constants. Structure constants, by the way, in this case are just partial derivatives of, uh, of my uh, 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 non-linear Memphis uh, operator. You, you, you remember, of course, uh, that partial derivatives of a tensor, uh, it is not a tensor, no, but at a singular point, sometimes they are. And uh, this is uh, that's a situation here. So partial derivatives of L uh, form, uh, uh, form uh, tensor, structure tensor of uh, the algebra, but uh, uh, also so you can uh, define the structure of uh, this algebra on the tangent space in a different way. You take two tangent vectors from uh, the tangent space at uh, the given point, uh, then extend them up to the vector fields. And then the, the, uh, the product uh, of uh, these two vectors in the sense of this uh, the algebra is defined in this way. You take uh, uh, the Lie bracket of vector fields, so eta and uh, L psi, and see the value at, uh, at our point P then uh, you, you will get exactly what uh, uh, you expect. And uh, as soon as we kind of uh, understand this concept, uh, so then we immediately so that we uh, can ask uh, uh, the question about uh, linearization so in, in, the, in the following context. Uh, so given a non-linear Nainhoes operator, uh, can we, uh, consider its linearization. So, under what conditions? So, this nonlinear object is equivalent to the, the, its linearization in terms of uh, suitable coordinate transformation. So, can we linearize it? Not, not in the sense of taking linear part, but in the sense of reducing to linear part uh, by means of uh, uh, coordinate transformation. Uh, I will ask uh, this. Uh, uh, this question, not ex not exactly this question, but uh, uh, more. Uh, uh, no, let, let, let's uh, let us uh, uh, let us look at uh, this definition first. I will say that uh, left symmetric algebra is non-degenerate if the following condition holds. I take any uh, non-linear Nanhuis operator, so having uh, this Lie algebra as its linearization. And if this uh, L is linearizable, so, so then I will say that uh, this uh, the algebra is non-degenerate. In other words, I can say it in this way. Take uh, the, this Lie algebra. It defines uh, the linear and phase operator. So and I perturb this operator by adding uh, some uh, non-linear uh, terms. Um, uh, in such a way that uh, this perturbation is still non-hues. So these non-linear terms, if they can always be killed by uh, suitable coordinate transformation, so then we say that the, uh, this uh, left symmetric algebra is non-degenerate. So this is exactly the same definition as uh, that in the case uh, of uh, uh, Lee. Uh, the algebras, uh, non-degenerate Lie algebras. And the, uh, uh, let me remind you the very, uh, very deep result by Jack Kohn that uh, uh, semi-simple uh, Lie algebras are, uh, are uh, non-degenerate in the real analytic case, but uh, not always uh, in uh, smooth case. So there is a difference here. Uh, that the one theorem which I, I want to mention in this context. Let's consider a very simple 
left symmetric algebra, which uh, you know, in some sense uh, reminds something semi-simple in the theory of the uh, groups. So it's a diagonal one. So take, uh, we, of course, we know that uh, this is an NQA separator. Uh, so diagonal elements are just x1, x2, so and so on. But the point is that so we consider uh, this separator at zero, the neighborhood of zero. At uh, zero, this separator vanishes. So if uh, if it's a little bit far away from zero, then of course uh, if we, if you do perturbation, this perturbation uh, due to the theorem, uh, the Hantius theorem, so will will not essentially change the separator. But at zero, it's absolutely unclear. Now, for instance, uh, that it's very easy to check that. So if you perturb the separator in uh, in the arbitrary way, then immediately you will see that uh, the, the eigenvalues are not smooth functions anymore. So the immediately some, some square roots or the, the, everything may happen. Uh, no, but uh, it appears that uh, uh, perturbations are uh, much better. So they uh, do not uh, change anything and can be uh, killed by uh, uh, a suitable uh, suitable uh, coordinate transformation. Uh, in a different way, uh, you, you may say that uh, this uh, singularity is stable under, uh, uh, under Nanthus uh, perturbations, uh, to, to which, is, uh, to which is nice. Um, maybe, I, I, I'm not sure, maybe I do not have uh, time to prove this, uh, but uh, the, the proof is, is very easy. The first, uh, you prove that uh, uh, that uh, you can kill all uh, non-linear terms so it's one by one, so first quadratic, then cubic, then uh, uh, terms of order k, k plus one, and so on. So, and this gives you uh, the formal solution to, to this problem. So there, there is a formal uh, coordinate transform which uh, that reduces uh, L to the to, to this original uh, form. Uh, so then the, you need to, to explain that uh, the formal uh, uh, solution so the, the power series uh, formal power series uh, is convergent. Uh, surprisingly, you do not need to do any analysis here in this case. You, you may apply uh, that's a very famous Artin theorem, which says that so it's if you have a, a, a system of algeb not algebraic analytic uh, equations and you have a formal solution uh, to this system, so then the, you can always find an analytic solution. So uh, in a system, uh, uh, it's algebraic system, uh, not a system of differential equations. And in this case, uh, the transform we're looking for, uh, the, this is just a uh, perturb the separation and uh, the diagonal coordinates uh, that we need. So these are nothing else but uh, the roots of the characteristic polynomial. So as I said, uh, that so if, if you perturb this polynomial in an arbitrary way, that the roots are the, not uh, smooth anymore. Uh, but in this case, uh, they, 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 what we can show that uh, the, uh, there are formal solutions. Uh, so there are for the formal, the power series for uh, the, for the roots of the characteristic polynomial. Uh, the Tartan theorem say that automatically so these expressions are analytic and conversion. That, that, that's uh, uh, one more remark. We still don't know if it is true in smooth case. Uh, the, in dimension two, it is true. Uh, but uh, in higher dimension, the, the, uh, it is, it is, it is, it's an open uh, problem. Uh, so one more uh, remark, uh, the non, uh, not just uh, an example of uh, non-linearizable uh, separator. So if we start uh, with the linear part of this form and perturb uh, in, the, in, the, in this way, uh, the, you, you can check that uh, the, uh, this perturbation is nine hertz. So, so perturbed operator is nine hertz. Uh, 
uh, the, uh, but it will not be equivalent to the original one. It, uh, it, uh, it is sufficient to just to compare discriminants of the characteristic polynomial uh, for the original uh, operator. It is identically zero, and uh, for the perturb, it is not. So the, the, this shows that, that uh, so some. Uh, uh, left symmetric algebras are non-degenerate, some are degenerate. So this one is degenerate. So the, what, the, what about uh, classification? Do we know uh, uh, which of them are non-degenerate or which singular points are stable and which are unstable? So yeah, that, that was done by uh, Andrei Konyaev. Uh, that, that is, uh, in my opinion, very nice and deep result. Uh, so his uh, the theorem so says uh, that uh, so we have 12 types of uh, left symmetric algebras uh, and six of them are um, uh, non-degenerate and the other six are the, the degenerate, uh, of, of course, with parameters uh, appropriately chosen. And uh, also, uh, so his classification shows uh, that the smooth case and real analytic case, uh, they, uh, they are different. In the smooth case, uh, there are uh, the more degenerate uh, uh, the uh, algebras. No, it, 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 it's by the way, it's the same situation in the case of Lie algebras. As I said, uh, no, that the typical example uh, is uh, the Lie algebra SL2R. SL2R is non degenerate in real analytic sense in terms of Poisson structures, I mean. uh, uh, but uh, degenerate in a smooth case. So why is that? Uh, no, the basically, it's my, my time is over, not just uh, the, the, the 30 seconds. So this example uh, shows what's going on. So it, uh, uh, this uh, for uh, this uh, the algebra, so here is the operator uh, the shown here. Uh, the, so there are non-trivial smooth perturbations, but uh, no non-trivial real analytic perturbations. Uh, of course, uh, so that's something to do with flat perturbation by means of flat uh, functions. Uh, you see this perturbation. Uh, so we can see there is like this. So this is exponent of uh, that's minus one divided by some squares uh, so to, to make it absolutely flat. Uh, and then the, the idea explaining why uh, in real analytic case it is, uh, it is impossible is very simple. So if you consider so this vector field, uh, uh, which corresponds to the second column of my matrix. Uh, so to just X and uh, alpha Y with alpha negative, though it, it looks like a hyperbolic. But uh, if alpha is irrational, then it's very easy to see that uh, it admits no uh, real analytic first integrals. But smooth integrals uh, so can be constructed. And in this case, uh, the, you, you will need to kind of this, use this flattening uh, the, the idea. Uh, and uh, this is the reason. So the, the behind uh, uh, this uh, this thing, uh, it, it's a very well known thing in uh, theory of vector fields. Okay, uh, that's uh, all. And uh, uh, the last thing I uh, I definitely need to say to mention is uh, that uh, this uh, theory. Uh, uh, is presented in detail in the paper by uh, Andrei Konyaev, uh, that, uh, that is uh, the, his uh, uh, the, the achievement, which uh, the, I appreciate uh, the very much. And uh, honestly, you know, for myself, uh, the, his work by Andrei was uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, indeed, the, the very serious motivation for uh, uh, First, uh, uh, starting to, to work in this direction because uh, the, this uh, shows that uh, it's uh, uh, linked with left symmetric algebras and uh, linearization procedure and non generacy. That uh, uh, this theory has, uh, uh, has something 
in common with Poisson geometry, which uh, I, I like very much. Okay, uh, that's uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you, Alexei. So, are there any questions? So maybe I'll start with a with a question. I mean, Alexei, in the end, I mean, you you made this analogy or comparison to Kant's theorem and Poisson geometry, and and this. So is it just the formal analogy or is there, I mean, similarity in the proofs also or? The, 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 no, can you hear me? Yeah, you can, yeah? Yeah. No, yeah, 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 I don't know what, uh, the, 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 what, uh, what to say. You know, uh, the, the, there is a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, then the, in my opinion, the, uh, uh, the difference is conceptually is uh, that uh, in the Poisson geometry, so uh, the automorphism group is very big. It consists of uh, all Hamiltonian transformations. Right? In this case, uh, it is, uh, this group is very small. It could be just uh, trivial uh, because uh, no, no, because everything is very rigid, so eigenvalues, the, the eigenvalues, so they must be preserved. And, uh, um, and uh, uh, for this reason, I'm afraid that uh, we will not be able to apply uh, this kind of algebraic, propoid uh, techniques in this case. But I, 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 don't, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure. So this, uh, this is the difference. So the, this situation is uh, much more uh, rigid. Uh, um, uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, if we uh, look at uh, what, for instance, at the, the example I showed is, the diagonal case, semi-simple case. And, uh, uh, and we see that, that in this case, uh, at least at uh, the level of results, uh, the results are look, look similar. Uh, that I don't know what to say to it. If you ask me if, uh, for instance, Andrei Konyaev and his proofs, in, uh, did he use any the techniques uh, from the Poisson geometry? No, I would, so, I would say no. No, no, Andre is attending this uh, our discussion. Then maybe uh, he could uh, uh, add uh, some some more comments. Uh, that I that what I what I really what I do expect. No, for, for instance, uh, that I talked to Nguyen Tianzong. Yeah, so he uh, uh, he wrote a book on on this problem, linearization problem in uh, uh, Poisson geometry, and uh, the. He says uh, that at least uh, the, this uh, uh, point, the uh, relation, uh, the difference between real analytic and smoothness, right? So that uh, everything can be understood, uh, he says, uh, in terms of uh, nash moser techniques in this case. And these techniques uh, that, that, that will be, will expect, is expected to be the same in, in both uh, series and uh, he even, uh, promised uh, uh, to teach me uh, so all this uh, stuff, and I'm still kind of, I'm still planning to have this discussion with him. Um, yeah, the, 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 it's a, it's a very reasonable question, and that I ask this question to myself, but I I I have only feeling, but not clear clear answer. Andre just came on. Uh, yeah, maybe. If you could comment, that would be great. I, I was on, just my video was off. Uh, <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, I can comment. Uh, I, well, if you look at the proof of COM, it starts actually the one uh, Weinstein did in his original paper. It starts with a cohomology trick. What he does is he uses uh, the uh, ab the absence of the cohomology in semi-simple case in Lie algebra, for Lie algebra. And this is a deep result we do not have. So the first step we start with technically is impossible here. We do not have any groups and you saw that all the Lie algebras are bad. Like you have a linearization when Lie algebra is commutative or solvable. The second thing which shows that uh, it's, it's, it's more, it's, 
not such a mathematical explanation, but at some point, uh, this, le uh, this left symmetric algebra uh, Alexey Viktorovich showed, uh, the one with the parameter, you got to the point of classification when you uh, have to linearize a vector field on the plane, but you have to do it uh, with a special coordinate changes. It turned out to be a very deep question in terms of two-dimensional vector fields which uh, uses, first of all, the results by uh, Yokoz, uh, which were obtained in, in the 90s, and that was a famous problem he solved and got a Fields Medal for that, uh, about linearization. And uh, some input from, from the specialists to get the final answer. It means that the sub-problem yeah, it's, it's very complicated and very deep in this special case. So um, I think the situation is quite, quite different. That was my comment to, about technical stuff. Okay. Maybe one more okay. comment. Uh, one well, more comment in, uh, in, the, in this direction. Uh, uh, I, uh, I don't expect uh, uh, that uh, the complete answer in, in any dimension in, or in dimension three, so will be obtained in the nearest future, no. No, but uh, some results that uh, I do, do believe uh, so can be obtained. Uh, and, uh, the, the, and why? Because because it, it's, it's rigid. As I explained, I don't know if, if this idea was clear or not, but in the diagonal case, uh, the, the point is that so we are looking for uh, coordinate transformation, so such that the new coordinates are still uh, uh, eigenvalues of uh, of our operator. So that we kind of we, we can do it uh, in algebraic sense. Not uh, it, we don't need to solve system of PDEs for this. In many cases, not always, but in many cases. And since it is rigid. Uh, I, I would expect uh, that in some cases uh, the non-degeneracy so can be uh, can, can be verified uh, in by using so absolutely different techniques and uh, in uh, in our paper on open problems. So there is even uh, the, so it's one question uh, or conjecture about what kind of non generate left symmetric algebras we might expect. So those for which, so now that, that uh, let me try to explain that. So it's, we have this operator and what we can do, we can compute for this operator that was linear entries. Uh, so we can compute uh, the expressions for the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial. So the, way it, uh, the trace will be linear, so then next will be quadratic, so and so on determinant will be polynomial of uh, degree n, so we will get n polynomials, homogeneous polynomials of uh, degree one to n. If these polynomials are algebraically independent, if they are algebraically independent, I believe that in this case uh, we will be able to prove uh, non-degeneracy. Of course, uh, the, the separate problem with, is to describe uh, such uh, left symmetric algebras for which uh, these coefficients are independent. So the, uh, what, what, what I had to wanna say to summarize uh, this discussion, uh, uh, there are uh, very natural particular questions uh, in uh, in this area to, to work on, and I am very optimistic about them. Thank you very much, everybody. Any other questions? You defined associator, yes? And uh, yeah. if it is left symmetric, so then we have some interesting... Uh, why not right symmetric? So, uh, uh, that do uh, I don't know maybe Andre maybe Andre could say something but uh, it it looks like that it sh should not be a big difference. But it is it is absolutely the same uh -huh. instead of it is absolutely the same if algebra is right symmetric 
then you can you need to take not the right multiplication operator but the left and you get the knee uh, structure knee case operator so ah, it's, yeah, it's indeed, yeah, yeah 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 indeed. so you just uh, in uh, in 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 this formula you just need to swap lower indices and uh, yes, that's and what you do you will get the nine case indeed yeah mm -hmm. so then no difference mm -hmm. Moreover, moreover, in uh, like in some works, especially in infinite dimensional Poisson geometry, they started actually with the right uh, symmetry, not left symmetry, for some reason, and then they switched to the left symmetry at some point. So, Alexey or oh. Andre could ask quickly. So, if it's commutative, it's associative, right? Or, no, 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 not, not necessarily. No, no. So it can be commutative and very bad. Yeah. Yes, it can, it can be commutative and uh, I mean commutative. Bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, it, uh, the well, there is another class of left symmetric algebras which is again famous in uh, theory of infinite dimensional Poisson structures called Novikov algebra. Uh, Novikov algebra is a left symmetric algebra with the right multiplication being commutative in the sense that you take two operators R in different points and they commute. And uh, for Novikov algebra, if it is commutative, then it is associative. But in general, left symmetric algebra, if it is uh, commutative, it doesn't need to be associative. Oh, uh, yeah, you mean right commutative, so... I mean, you uh, take two two right multiplication two right multiplication, they and they commute like, as operators. Yes. So the rightly algebra is abelian. Right? There, there is there is no uh, there right is no right algebra right. in general, but here it is abelian. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alexei, so you have uh, lecture number two pre-recorded, which is now also online on the SMRI page. Yeah, so there are two parts. So it's a, a pre-recorded lecture. And I guess that's the idea that we uh, or watch them before your next lecture, right? I guess it's similar for- uh, they Definitely, uh, so you, you need this material uh, to before my lecture on Thursday. Because uh, the, the, this lecture too will be the, the, about so called to GL regular nine Hertz operators. And uh, on Thursday, I will talk about uh, the kind of the same object in dimension two. Okay, so that's our homework, I guess. Yeah. Vladimir, uh, is there extra, uh, what's the homework from your point of view? I guess you're giving the next talk tomorrow at six. Um, and there, you're lecture one and there's a lecture three. Um, how do they, I don't know, should we try to watch them before that or? Well, if you don't watch them before them that you forget to do it, I believe. <laughs> but uh, just, uh, I think the idea was that uh, we uh, always exchange the speaker. So I started then, uh, Alexei continues and I continues again. So my lecture, number so my my talk should comes after the lecture two i believe and it is also it also put uh, kind of the, the context so it use some definitely use some uh, results technique from pre-recorded lecture one and some 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 from pre-recorded lecture two so the recommendation is to watch both but if you really are in the short of time then I will try to recall, to recap, and to recall what what one will need. But uh, if you in the shortage of time, then the pre-recorded lecture one is more important for my talk. Well, thank you very much, uh, thank you for everybody else, and I'll see everybody tomorrow. Um, bye bye.